rat captains are gathered in the corners of the sick room. They sat silent and... Hello and welcome to Magnathia Builder World. This is part two of the Redwall Abbey build for Burrows and Badgers. Uh, it's worth pointing out actually that this model would also be suitable for pretty much any other fantasy uh, tabletop game and most historical games set in Northern Europe um, after the medieval period all the way through to Second World War. So anything you like really from kind of... Um, I don't know, lion rampant all the way through to bolt action, for example. Um, this is the second week of the build. This is a commission build for Black Dragon Miniatures in Hinkley in Leicestershire. The, the whole model is going to be three foot by two foot. The plan, the idea, is that uh, a whole game of B&B could be played just on the one model. You wouldn't need the rest of the table at all um, because there's going to be all sorts of, of different parts of the model that can come apart and be used to fight a running skirmish through. Um, there are other ideas too, which are that the although the board is three two foot by one foot sections, each one of those two foot by one foot sections can stand alone as its own piece of scenery in its own right and make up uh, a much bigger part of a town. Or you could take the Abbey building, this bit out the middle, put the other two ends together, they will make up their own enclosure and you get a two foot by two foot uh, feature in one place and a one foot by two foot feature in another place so last week uh, the first part of the build we got the main part of the um, abbey built here it is um, and then uh, we didn't get very far with everything else my original plan had been to get all the walls cut out for all three parts of the model all in one go uh, so we had an idea of how it's going to work out didn't really do that Board section two is part done, and board section three looks like this. So, we've still got quite a lot of work to go. Let's have a look at board section three. I'll talk you through that, and we're going to have a quick look at how we're going to get on with this model. And then I'm going to have to crack on, because I've got two one foot by two foot section boards I want to make in a week. Come over here. I'm going to move the abbey. We'll have a look at that other board section. Okay, so just before we go any further, here is my regular plug for the game Burrows and Badgers. It's an anthropomorphic animal um, skirmish game. Uh, people who are into uh, Brian Jack's Red Wall books absolutely love b, b although please bear in mind it's not the same thing. Um, the creatures in Red Wall are very much aligned by species and some are good and some are bad whereas in uh, b and b one of the cool things about it is this amazing range of figures um any figure can go with any figure which i think is really really cool i really love that so this is one of michael lovejoy's badgers although uh i have changed the weapon on this one just because i wanted to and this is a fabulous otter mage casting some kind of fireball um a massive beast and a large beast and then down here, uh, a starling. This is probably one of my favourite figures in the range, actually. Just superb. One piece metal casting straight out of the packet. Virtually no cleaning up to do. Straight onto a base. Painted. Job done. Fantastic. These things pretty much paint themselves. Uh, and uh, a lovely little mouse. Um, fan dancing character. Special character. Um, uh, a mercenary character there. The game is brilliant. It just uh, is great fun. Like any game, um, you can play it as a power gamer. There are, there are combos you can find if you want to go after your mates and zap them, but that's not what the appeal of the game to me is. Narrative campaign, great possibility for uh, narrative skirmishes. Uh, charming miniature range, just absolutely brilliant. It's great to be able to support uh, a small independent company uh, in the UK, producing a uh, fun game, great miniatures. And uh, on top of all of that, the B&B &B community on Facebook is just a really nice place to hang out. So if you haven't played Burrows and Badgers, do please go and give it uh, a look. The uh, website is right here eh, and down there in the description. Anyway, back to the build. Let's have a look. <sighs> Before we move the Abbey then, let's have a quick recap of where we're at from last week. The main build is in XPS foam, 10mm XPS foam. If you want to know more about 
foam and the materials I'm using on this build, go back and check out last week's video. In fact, if you haven't watched last week's video and the construction of this model, then don't start here. Go back and watch it. If you haven't seen last week's, you're probably not a subscriber from my channel. So if that's the case, subscribe to my channel. Go and check out the Burrow, Burrows and Badgers playlist and definitely go back and watch how this thing was put together to get this far. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this video, video talking about materials. It is mostly made from XPS polystyrene, high density polystyrene. This is 10 millimeter stuff here and the floor of the Abbey is 25 millimeters. Um, it's got scribed in stonework. I'm not a a big fan of sitting down and cutting out a six squillion individual stones scribed in stonework and scribed in pavings um, it's i'm going to be using cake decoration columns to help support the roof and the tower and i've 3d printed windows scaled them up to the size i wanted them and stuck them into the model as well and the rose window at the back over here this is not stuck in yet um that has a whole load of work i need to do to it so that's going to be painted separately and put in when everything else is done so this is the abbey building and on either side there are, is going to be a one foot by two foot board that goes with it to make up the whole model let's have a look at one of those there we go there not really much to look at this is a nine millimeter thick piece of plywood cut to one foot by two foot actually because of the nature of the board and the uh, diy supplies it's just a tiny bit under two feet which is really frustrating but it's close enough and all the boards are the same size this model then uh i've got to make exterior walls just like we've got on the abbey they're going on here the abbot's house is going to be on here two-story house there uh and over in this corner we're going to have some kind of watchtower gatehouse kind of thing as well because this may well become an additional gate to the uh re the other model there's a much bigger one in the front of the abbey but i'm going to turn this one i think into a gate as well so this will become a kind of gatehouse there's also marked on here we can just about see a couple of marks which shows the uh exit where it is from the abbey itself and this will be a cloister that goes across the front of the house here and down the side here we're gonna have a formal garden with a fountain in the middle that's the plan that's an awful lot a build to do the other board section I'm, I'm part the way through that's got the kitchen and the refectory and some cells for the monks um, and has been rightly pointed out by um, at least one or two of my viewers there are no toilets so I'm gonna have to make an ablutions shelter I think on the other model as well thanks for that um, but <laughs> we'll see how we go so this is what we're building this week by the end of this video I'm hoping to have the construction and the two other boards completed um, to the point that they are roofless, but all the walls are up and stuck on. Um, and we're in this video, we're going to have a look at some of the details, like cutting into the polystyrene to put in the um, the 3D printed windows and that kind of thing. We might get into digging through the cack on this video for adding some details, but that might be left for a third video. We'll have to see how much time all this build takes us. Three inch walls, strips. Really, really, I'm going to have to get myself. I've got some hot wire cutting, but still a brand new standing off plate. Cut it straight down. Steel wool. I'll give you a nice clean cut. Really important that you keep. Use a sharp blade to see them throughout the place, don't we? Simple. They're in these big, expensive machines. <laughs> right, so I've uh, got a bunch of polystyrene cut high, de high density XPS foam and uh, three inch strips. I should have done this bit before, and actually, these are going to make the external walls. Yeah, and probably also actually the abbot's house is going to be the ground floor is going to be three inches tall. This tower is probably going to be four inches tall, but I've got some four inch stuff as well. 
So the first thing I need to do then before I do anything else, as I've done in other videos, so I'm not going to spend very long doing it in this video, is texture the uh, XPS foam uh, and for external walls, well, it needs to be done on both sides. The inside of the house, don't go what the inside of the house only has uh, brick on the outside and glass on the inside, so it's not too bad. But um, here we go. If you haven't watched the last video, I'm not quite sure why you're watching this video, but if you haven't watched the last video, uh, oh, you need a recap. This is how I texted my XPS phone. Tin foil rolled into a ball. Interesting random shape. XPS foam laid out on a mat. Tin foil rolled over XPS foam. Just gets rid of the smooth surface. It genuinely doesn't take very long. Um, if you are going to do plaster surfaces, all the inside walls of the buildings that I'm doing are plastered, then all I'm going to do when I come to paint those is I'm using this surface sealed with Mod Podge and I paint straight onto it. Um, if I'm doing outside exterior walls, if they're not rendered, which a lot of them won't be because I want the solid brick to show through, um, then they are going to have bricks scribed on. I do not intend to go cutting out individual bricks for making models because even for me that appears to be an awful lot of effort life is just too short so this is what happens and I'm not going to film it all um, the upper floor I think of the Abbott's house might be rendered with lime and plaster might even do it half timbered uh, that won't need uh, quite as much um, scribing then, there we go, it's coming on, that's what it looks like, I'm going to do the rest, the rest of these sheets over here, then I can cut them into individual sizes, right, you don't need to watch that though, that will be really boring, <laughs> okay, these are then inch wide, Inch square columns of foam getting the textured treatment. There we go. These are going to make large uprights in the surrounding brick wall. Again, I'm regretting not doing this. Uh, well, it was all one piece of styrene. Actually, it's no good because I still would have had to have kind of done each side. So that's four size textures. Two more to go. I know it all looks great, but it's a right old faff. <laughs> then I'm going to take all these bits of polystyrene into the house. I'm going to sit down in front of the telly. I'm going to equip myself with this biro and I'm going to draw bricks into, or big lumps of stone actually, into all of this polystyrene. Yeah, I love XPS foam. Girls, the dull thing about um, making a model this way is all this scribing of bricks. I mean, that's just the lower floor of the tower that's going on the gate by the gate on, on part three of the build. Um, that's a lot of bricks. Still, it could be worse. I could be cutting them out and sticking them all together individually. Now, I've got to cut out these doors and windows, which is what we're going to have a look at now very briefly, um, and uh, see how we do that. There are a couple of ways of doing it. Um, so let's have a closer look. There are a number of ways then we can cut polystyrene. Um, there's serious foam workers. Uh, all tend to have a, a, a cutter called a Proxon which is a, a hot wire cutter, which is great for cutting lots of things like bricks and various other bits and pieces. Um, but uh, a, a lot of this isn't gonna help. That's not gonna help doing a lot of these because these are internal shapes. Um, so I have here uh, my a polystyrene cutter, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna use for doing this. Although a lot of this I, I do with a knife. This is a hot wire suspended across there, which is gonna be fine for cutting hopefully this 
doorway. Let's have a look here. Let's see if we can get that zoomed in. So in this case here, this hot wire, that should be fine. I'm not going to go straight up that line as best I can. Problem is, is you need a really steady hand doing this. And it's kind of tricky because even then, wobbling. Uh, which, of course, is kind of like handy when you've got something like a prox on because you can get a jig that will hold it all in place. So hot wire like this is all right. And, of course, this kind of thing, this shape, has got... Um, I can get into it from one side. So I can pull that out. And that's not bad. But even then, it's not quite as smooth as I like it to. And this kind of cutter is no good for getting into doing this hole so i'm going to swap the head on this and um we'll have a look at a different kind of cutter and see if that's any good as well i'm prepared to kind of like sacrifice this one bit of polystyrene to have a look at this um so let's check it out all right now i've got um a wand cutter you can see that and that's heating up nicely um so let's just test that on that that doorway i just cut out there yeah it's kind of warming up all right so i'm gonna have a go at cutting out one of these windows with this wand cutter Here we go stick that in there we can see that that's going in i'm going into the middle of the, the polystyrene there and then i'm going to go over to the wall and oh, that's not too bad but even then, got to be careful with these things because once melted, it's gone, it's gone, you know. I'm sticking inside the line. There we are. I'll turn that off. Let's see if I can find one of the uh, windows that's going to go in there. Oh, this is... This is one of the windows that's going to fit in that cut and fit in that hole. But even that has made it, that heat has made that uh, melt quite a lot. Um, and that, although that will stick in with uh, PVA, I'm going to need to feel around that. So, here we go, look. That's got needs to feel around the sides of that. So that's still not, I don't think, a great solution. Let's take another one of these wall sections look this has got two windows in it um and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take a scalpel but what i'm going to do is replace that crappy blade and i put a brand new blade on there and actually cutting the styrene because it's thin this is only like 10 millimeter thick polystyrene we should be able to do this. Now, the tricky thing, of course, with um, cutting with a knife is the angle you go in at. Um, sometimes wrecks. It's it difficult. If you've got to go try and get in going real straight. But Okay, so here we go. Look, I'm going to put... There's my new scalpel blade, brand new scalpel blade. It's much, much better to use sharp blades, brand new blades whenever you can because you press less hard with them, you're less likely to slip and stick them in yourself. So, I'm going to cut out, turn my wand back on. I'm uh, going to give that a moment to warm up. I'm going to cut out one window with the wand and one window with the scalpel and we're going to see what's what. So I'm going to stick the wand in there just to see if it's hot enough. Not quite. I'm going to give it a moment more to warm up. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. While I'm waiting for my wand to warm up, I'm going to take my scalpel and I'm going to cut out a hole. Right, so very carefully, scalpel going in inside the pink line. And it's a brand new blade, so it cuts this stuff pretty well. Do my absolute hardest to try and keep the blade as upright as I can make it. That is the difficult bit with cutting with a knife. Um, some of the windows 
one way or another have ended up a little bit wonky but and they'll still need filling but scalpel blade in there is doing the job you're getting atmospheric smoke coming across this now i'll check it on the other side and i haven't gone the way through so i'm going to go back in again with a second cut with the scalpel because I wasn't getting the scalpel blade going all the way through the styrene because of the cutting mat. There you go, there's my hole cut out with the scalpel. Um, and we can try that window in there. Bear in mind, all of these windows are exactly the same size. That window sits in there perfectly. Look at that, happy with that. It's the wrong way around to be quite honest. I want that front bit there, but there we are. That's sitting in there. Gorgeous, that is. Right, now I'm gonna have another go with the heat wand. So, hot cutting tool, stick that in. Oh, well, that's plenty hot enough. Look at that, extremely hot. You can see how it's just melted straight through there. Great for some things. In fact, on some models, what I need to do is go back and use this to add battle damage and bits and pieces. But actually, I want to try and not melt that polystyrene too much. Um, because... And, yeah, see, look, I, I'm, I'm being as careful as I can trying to try and pick line. But um, I obviously need to practice with this because that's going to be too big a hole. And, again, I'm not really very happy with that. So it's all about really the right tools for the job and um, this particular job I can't help thinking needs a scalpel rather than the hot one. I mean it cuts it out but as it is I'm going to have to go and neaten that up now because the way the hot wand works you get heat radiating off the round nature of the wand so i've got wobbly bits um so as it is i'm gonna to have to go in there with a the scalpel i think and just neaten that up a little and then i'm probably still gonna to have to feel that when it comes to putting a window in I mean, it's not bad but actually with the amount of effort it's taking Oh we go, I didn't do too badly there, but with the amount of effort it's taking, I might as well still cut these with a scalpel. Horses for courses. You could invest in a hot wire cutter. I think for straight lines, the, this end um, is pretty useful. I'm not too convinced about the wand. The wand for cutting large pieces and sculpting hills and that kind of thing is the tool to use. Um, uh, especially with and uh, then with this end on it but actually for fine detail like that i'm still going to stick to really sharp knives i think there you go i hope that was uh, uh, of interest and help to you um let's move on because i've got an awful lot of this build still to go right so that, that's the cells now uh done on the next to refectory so all of there's accommodation now for monks i suppose it could be used as kind of like actual cells kind of like prison kind of thing but you know bit grand for a prison um there's the refectory in the kitchen and walls and then over here there's a gatehouse and walls and now this has got to be the abbot's house that's got to go on here and a little bit of walls left and then all the ground floor stuff will be done then i can start working out what's going to go in the grounds and how the cloisters are going to work um uh, funnily enough there's still quite a lot of building to go but most of, oh, well, a lot of the polystyrene work, a lot of the, the work is there. I've literally only got a cut from a ground floor point of view. Four more walls and a couple of bits here and that's done. And then I can get up onto the first floor and the tower on the abbey itself. And uh, they're going to work out what the roofs are going to look like. But I think the roofs might be for video three. Okay, here's uh, board two and three then. Um, all the ground floor's done. Uh, we've got to do a first floor and a roof for the gatehouse and tower here. Um, and then we've also got to do a uh, first floor and roof for the abbot's house over here. Um, and then obviously we're going to have to do a load 
of stuff in the yard. So this is going to be the vegetable garden over here and this is going to be a formal garden over here and we've got to put a cloister in that's going to run from here, across here, across the front of the abbot's house and down this wall. Still got quite a lot of work to do and it's Thursday. Um, so um, I'm going to uh, kind of crack on, I think. See where we are. I also need to go and take this and put it with um, the abbey and uh, get some shots of that and see what it all looks like and then work out what's next. Okay then, here we are. 3D printers whirring away in the background. Um, this is uh, where we're at Thursday, week two. You can now see how this is starting to work out. This is going to be pretty damn epic when it's done. We've now got the main abbey. We've got the fur lower floor, the ground floor of the abbot's house in place. The tower, it's the gatehouse here. That's going to have a gateway there. Main gate, and then over here, refectory, kitchens, and cells. Roofs are going to do next week. So this is going pretty well. Um, still to do this week then. First floor on here, first floor on here and work out how we're going to do the tower <laughs> standing on those fallen um, pillars there. Um, that's pretty cool. Then also other configurations go like this. Both of these four pieces are made uh, separately and um, I haven't made the wall section that's going to go along here and go along here. Uh, they'll be removable so they could actually be completely individual things or we can do this and apart from having that old wall bit over there this then will go together and we will end up with vegetable garden down here with a cloister cloister going across there formal garden here abbot's house and all of that still quite a large um, place uh, has got a gate there uh, gates and doorways at the back as well so yeah I'm quite pleased with this next bit we've got to get on with then uh, is the cloisters and the uh, first floors so I'm not going to do any more talking I'm going to go and get on with more building <laughs> right then so this is um, the first floor for the tower at the gatehouse on the uh, Abbot's house and now the, the tower ground floor has got windows on both outsides and one on the inside. Now this is, hasn't got a window on the cloister side, which is fine because they don't need it. But I'm going to put a window in each of the first floor levels. You know, from a gaming point of view, that's better because it means that the characters inside it and they can look any way. So from that point of view, I'm literally just drawing around one of the windows that I'm using on all four walls roughly marked out so that um, I'm going for roughly in the middle of each wall um, although thinking about it I want a chimney on that back wall so I might offset one of these windows a little bit so I can have a chimney running up that would make more sense Because even the blokes in the guardhouse in the wall there need to have to keep warm in the winter time. So I'm going to offset that there. So there's now one window to cut out on each bit. And I can scribe everything. And you can see this lower line that I've marked in here. Because, uh, there we go, look. Go on, go on, go on. I've marked that line in there because that's where the... Um, I'm going to use 10 millimeter off cuts uh, in the bottom that's going to then support the balsa wood floor that I'm going to stick into this. So, uh, cut out the windows, uh, draw on the brickwork, stick the first lot together, then make a little roof for it, which I'm going to probably do, uh, I'm probably not going to do with crenellation because that's just going to be a faff. Um, and this, this isn't a castle, this isn't a fortification, but it does need a roof with some kind of wall around the top, again, which would be quite, you know, good from a gaming point of view. So that will be the next bit to do on top of this. And then that will be the tower, the gatehouse 
done uh, and then I've just got to work out how I'm going to do the first floor of the Abbott's house on the roof all right I'll keep going ready to assemble the towel then we're going to glue sides and pin it with two pit toothpicks like everything else pretty straightforward using Gorilla woodworking glue my glue of choice for XPS foam good stuff get a terrific bond with this I'm literally just gluing all sections like that you can see where I stuck on XPS foam on the bottom 10 mils that's going to lift the floorboards up so here is the uh, wall that's going to be it's the wall that's in the garden overlooking the cloister um, and that's going to attach to that ah, of course look there you go uh, this is a lack of measuring going on here because that ain't going to work so we're going to have to trim down this bit of foam here to make that fit in there Of course, that then goes in there nicely. And we have to do that at the other end. I wonder if I'm going to have to cut a bit off that too. Yes, I am. Just a tiny little sliver. That tiny little sliver of foam means I can then fit in this bit. There we go. We're just going to put in our toothpick pegs. There we go, there goes one in. Put that in place. Take another toothpick peg, stick that down the bottom. And over the other side as well. The nice thing about doing this is if you put it in the right place in a where you scribe brickwork you can hardly see the resulting holes or you can always and a lot of the time I will when it's dry just trim the take a pair of clippers and trim the, the cocktail stick right down and then paint over top of it and you can hardly notice it anyway and it actually gives the whole joint a little bit more strength because um, the whole thing then is uh, kind of like pinned as well as just stuck with glue. Although well, this glue is pretty good, good stuff. So that's going to go in there. That drops in nicely. And so what I've got to do now actually is cut the balsa wood floor to fit. Which I'll do in a moment. go job done well it isn't very often that things work out really really nicely but this is um, what's that one and a half millimeter two millimeter bolts of wood and uh, just by chance it pretty much fits in there perfectly I'm just gonna have to measure off this end slice that off and that's gonna make the floor for the first floor of the gate tower which is pretty cool. Uh, I'll then cut a hole into it for where the stairs or the ladder's going to go. But all I'm literally doing is marking here and here. Roughly speaking, that's where the 10mm wall is. Going to take my steel rule, my sharp Stanley knife, slice that off. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw into, because I haven't had enough drawing in the things with a biro I'm going to draw into this with a biro because that's what I like about balsa wood you can do just that take biro steel rule balsa wood draw nice pink lines it's a matter if they're not too even I'm not trying to make them exactly the same planking. Uh, 
back I might have a slightly bigger one here Across there like that and then we're gonna actually put some more planking so I'm just gonna draw in scribe into that a couple of places not everywhere not on every board uh, so some not work and I'm also gonna make some planks just drawn across you can see I'm not doing any measuring I'm literally just drawing straight lines across here and then I'm also going to put in some nail heads now I mean from a scale point of view they're pretty bloody massive nails but they work they get picked up in the paint job they'll look quite nice so it works quite well there we go so that's my uh, flooring um, we could, yeah, just for a bit of fun, I'll tell you what we could do is, um, in one of these planks, we'll take my standing knife and cut into it as opposed to draw into it, and uh, we're just going to cut a bit of a hole, rough and ready, where the wood's worn away, just so we can actually, yes, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really make a lot of difference, but there's a bit of worn floor there, because they're running out in the abbey, bless them, they haven't got enough money. To maintain everything so I uh, dig out some of that that's you end up with some holes in the woodwork taking care not to stick knife into hand that makes a change there we are now I haven't put a trap door or anything in here I might actually just put a kind of model of trap door over the top of it but it's the least important part there and that literally just drops in fits in quite nicely actually check that out there we go and um I can stick that down and then now uh, we have a floor there on that first floor section and then they do the same really for the the roof too um but that's quite nice hurrah okay here we are using scraps of xps because i don't want to waste any of it i'm now making the uh Roof of the God Tower, the Gate Tower. So I've cut out two of these, and uh, I'm then going to have, which <laughs> I'm going to work there, and I've cut some smaller pieces. Let's see if I can find the right ones. These are 10 mil, so these are going to sit there, and actually, they're gonna, what they're going to do is I've cut them so they're going to hang in side, and again, this is going to support the floor, which again is going to be wood, going to use that balsa wood there. And then I'm going to drop some wall sections in thus. So here we go. We're going to do a bunch more. Scribing with the biro. It's going to be cool. But that'll work. That'll quite be quite nice. That'll have floor in there. Uh, and it's not really a battlement. But there's some cover up on the roof. Uh, and characters can look out from there. Uh, which would be a good place. Uh, and then I've just got to do the first floor of the abbot's house. Work out the roofs, do the cloisters, work out the layout of the gardens, put the paving slabs in, cap off all the uh, main columns, paint it, add details. Yeah, it's definitely going to be another video. Definitely going to be another video. But we're making good progress. It's looking good. I'm happy. This. Those of you viewers who watch a lot of my Necromunda videos will, will be thinking, well, where's the digging through the cack? in this series of videos and um, uh, you know in some ways uh, I haven't been digging through the cack but but I have got some cack that's going on this model for starters there's this uh, which was right at the top of the cack uh, and I think it's a Playmobil roof um, uh, given to me by a cack donor <laughs> and I'd be saving this for a model but actually this would be really cool this is going to be the roof on the Abbot's house I just need to work out how I'm going to fit it around all the polystyrene. Um, but I've uh, trimmed off some plastic uh, bits here so it goes flush. And now I'm going to fit that to the polystyrene roof. So just for those of you who are missing it now already, now is the time to go digging through the cat. 
Okay, so this is the, the abbot's house over the back over here. Um, there's some, there are some bits that still need to be done to it, obviously. Hasn't got chimneys, but the main structure is done. So the abbot's house then is in uh, two separate sections, ground floor and first floor. Oh, and we can take off the roof as well. So the ground floor, as you can see, is completely bare at the moment. It needs flagstones. There's going to be a set of stairs in there. I could, if I was making this for me, fill this with loads and loads of scenic elements. Um, and uh, it might end up with the odd thing in it anyway, um, because, you know, it needs to lend that to it. But I'm going to leave the, that for the client to either fill in his own details or leave it completely blank for gameplay point of view. And then this is the first floor, um, made in exactly the same way as the uh, gatehouse tower. So I haven't bothered filming the construction of this. Um, the uh, bolter wood support floor has been supported with offcuts of uh foam of uh, polystyrene which not only support the floor um which isn't stuck in at the moment it's just laying there it's going to be stuck in eventually not only do they support the floor they also make um uh, a structure that holds that floor in place on top of the ground floor which i'm also going to do to the underside of the guard tower which currently doesn't do that so this just sits loose on top of each bit of the tower um there's the, the top side so i'm going to put bits under here so it will hold it all in place on the model so it doesn't get jogged around uh too much when games are being played the roof you, you remember uh i dug through the cack for and um now has had polystyrene cut into it and it, that sits inside this bit of wall, and uh, this will all be brickwork here, ornate brickwork. In fact, I'm almost tempted to add a layer of decoration brickwork over here on both sides. So there's a bit of a front and the back to it. That's kind of tempting there. Um, I'll have a think about that. Or oh, I might just leave as is. So that's the Abbott's house. It's fairly plain, but it's quite large. Um, and we are now at the point where all the main structures, except the tower on the uh, roof of the abbey is now complete, but I'm not doing that this week. That'll have to be done next week. Here then is everything that uh, we've achieved this week. I was initially disappointed because I haven't done the tower in the abbey, but actually looking at it, there's an awful lot that's been put together. Some of it was kind of cut out last week, but nothing was really assembled. Whereas now I have all of this this week. So you can see that this makes quite a decent um layout quite a decent uh scenic element feature for a table without the central abbey which was part of my plan um just to remind you then over here we have the uh monk cells or they could be prisoners cells we have the refectory where uh those who live in the abbey gather to eat over the back there we have a kitchen could be a brewery as well we're gonna have gardens in both of these bits here we've got a gate tower here because this is going to be a gate as well and we have the abbot's house over the back there that's a hell of a lot of construction it's a lot of 3d printing windows it's an awful lot of scribing um there's still a lot to go um but actually i'm really quite pleased with progress this week this is a bigger build than i thought it was going to be for um those who were concerned i think i might end up with an ablutions hut down here or certainly uh, toilets uh, um, of some description for the inhabitants of the uh of red wall as well uh and uh yeah i'm pretty pleased with that that's that's coming on quite nicely what? now we've got the abbey in place and you can see everything else is starting to take shape <laughs> this is a pretty epic build i'm really pleased with it um things that i'm really pleased with i'm really pleased with the 3d printed windows I'm really pleased with how I've lined up different bits of the model so you can look all the way straight through. These windows in here, they kind of line up really nicely with each other, which is really cool. Um, so from that point of view, there's going to be plenty of opportunity for play on this model. I don't want to fill it up with too much detail because I want to get maximum amount of play out of it. It's got to have stuff. There's got to be things in here and in here, but I'm not going to overcrowd it and I'm not going to fill it up with loads and loads of little scenic elements. Um, uh, first of all, 
that wasn't what the client kind of like asked for. And secondly, um, if he wants to do that kind of thing for specific games, he can, but I'm not going to. If it was my model, I'd be going so over the top on, on different detail and bits and pieces. Um, I'd be chucking loads of this. And I'm pretty sure Gary will have all sorts of things he can put in it too. So what is left to do? After two weeks of this build, uh, the biggest single job is putting a roof on the abbey itself it's got to include remember a tower coming out the middle um that's going to be supported by uh columns inside the building and then there's going to be a tower on top and then i've got to put a roof on it i've also got to roof all of the buildings over the refectory side that's going to be a pain in the neck i had thought about using will's plastic card pan tiles but i'm not sure how well they're going to look and i might end up roofing this like i roof everything else with cardboard uh tiles my god that's going to take a long time um side of that then other things that have got to happen we've got to add a cloister coming out of the of here on this side of the abbey running across the front of the abbot's house and down the side wall and also a covered walkway cloister um going outside from the uh monk's cells uh, and another covered walkway from the front of the refectory to the abbey the idea being that the abbot over here if he is going to eat or she if it's an abbess is going to eat their meals with everybody else can walk from the front door of her house through the main building out the other side and not get her feet her paws wet as she goes so that's a pretty big job um in itself i haven't even worked out what that's going to be made of what the structure of that is probably going to be balsa wood i think actually rather than uh foam core i'd like to vary some of the materials being used on the model and then i've got to put paving down inside buildings and in outside the front of the abbey here uh, paving stones and a formal garden and that kind of thing so we're certainly over the hump we've got most of the construction done which i'm really pleased about but we've still got some way to go um definitely one more video if not possibly even two um in f future videos i'm going to do some more uh detail about working with balsa wood because i've got to make just looking at a quick glance one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifty loads of gates and doors for this model um because i want to have that option there so in many cases they are going to have uh, uh balsa wood doors made for them so we're going to have definitely do a session about that uh, i've got to finish off the rose window at the back i'm not telling you how i'm going to do that till it's done um so yeah we've still got a way to go but this is looking rather cool so that is the end of week two then of the red wall mauve wall build uh, a lot to go but uh, I'm really pleased with the progress I made and I'm already regretting having to give this one away because I think it's going to be stunning when it's finished, even though I do say so myself. Um, the next videos for this then are going to include roofs, towers, doors and other details and painting. So there's probably going to be two videos yet to come uh, from this. They might not be back to back, mind you. I might pop off and do another project for a week in between just to keep me fresh and wanting to get on with this. Um, However, there's a lot of storage required for this. These things are designed to fit in really useful crates. Uh, and I will make sure that when the tower gets added to the main building, that will be detachable. So it could still get stored because that, of course, is a huge problem for gamers, be domestic gamers or even friendly local gaming stores. Um, so from that point of view, if you don't want to miss what, how Red Wall, Mauve Wall, turns out, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I've got well in excess of two and a half thousand subscribers now constantly surprised that so many people want to watch but thank you very much if you're not one of my subscribers then what on earth are you doing subscribe now you know it makes sense and that way you'll see the end of this epic b and b build go and watch all my playlists uh make sure you leave comments and let me know what you think of this video and the build and how it's going other suggestions uh for other builds i'm loving all those comments i'm getting at the moment so thank you very much guys um, make sure you tune in and I'll see you next time on Magathea Builder Worlds. Cheers.